What's up, Fantasy Pros gang? My name is Andrew Erickson. Today, I'm going to be breaking down my top 10 trade targets and players for week three. But first, before I get into the list, if you want a chance to win a signed Debo Samuel San Francisco 49ers jersey, courtesy of bettingpros.com, your place to start betting smarter and not harder, all you have to do is subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now, comment below in this video, and that's it. I'll be announcing a winner right here on the channel. So make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and to claim your prize. Let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into the top 10 list. Running back, Miles Sanders, Carolina Panthers, bye. Miles Sanders carried the ball 14 times for 43 yards while adding in three catches on five targets in week two. The gap between him and Chuba Hubbard was larger than it was in week one, bolstering the case for Sanders as a more reliable fantasy RB2, albeit one in a bad offense. Sanders played 62% of the snaps on Monday night, which was more than in week one. Hubbard carried the ball just twice for 16 yards while also adding five catches for 34 yards on five targets. He ran one more route than Sanders, but he didn't touch the ball until the second half. The majority of his opportunities came during the final drive of the game. The volume in receiving is there for Miles Sanders with touchdown upside as his major flaw. But even so, he's averaged 16 and a half carries and over five targets per game after signing with the Panthers in free agency. He ranks seventh in total touches and fifth in opportunities among running backs. And with the schedule easing up for Carolina after a tough start versus two divisional opponents, Sanders is one of the few RB2s that I feel confident buying with so many injuries at the position. Seattle, Minnesota, Detroit, Miami, and Houston are all defenses that can be run on. Trade Najee Harris or DJ Moore to get Miles Sanders. Next up, running back Maheem Mostert, Miami Dolphins, sell. Raheem Mostert was the Dolphins' RB1 for the second straight game, playing 73% of the snaps on Sunday night. He totaled 19 touches and scored. But Denver's defense has been decently stingy versus the run this year, so the matchup isn't ideal for Week 3. And Week 2 was the perfect storm for Mostert, with his snaps and touches bloated by an injury to Salvin Ahmed. I'm still in the camp of stashing rookie Devon A. Chain, with Mostert's 31-year-old age and extensive injury history looming. Cash out on Mostert after a big primetime game. Go get Isaiah Pacheco or James Cook for a Mostert. Another Dolphins player, wide receiver Jalen Waddle. Bye. Assuming everything checks out okay with Jalen Waddle's progression through the concussion protocol, he's a massive buy low target for me. He's been overshadowed by Tyreek Hill to start the year, but he's coming off an 86 yard performance on just four catches Sunday night. He only has four catches in each of his first two games, but he's averaged over 80 receiving yards per game, averaging over 20 yards per reception. He just needs some more touchdown luck, which could easily come his way in a big way if Patrick Sertain matches up more with Tyreek Hill when Miami faces Denver in week three. Maybe the Puka Nakua hype can net you Waddle or this next running back. Running back Jameer Gibbs, Detroit Lions, sell. Jameer Gibbs saw a team high nine targets for 26% share for seven receptions and 39 yards in week two, seeing his role grow in his second game. I have to imagine Gibbs' role will only continue to increase based on the injury to David Montgomery. Craig Reynolds is the next guy up on the depth chart with Zonovan Knight signed from the practice squad. I don't think it would be necessary to get Gibbs in an 80% snap roll, so I think there's some overvalue with him in the trade market. One of Reynolds' carries in week two came at the six yard line, and after Montgomery got hurt, Reynolds played on the next first two drives. Gibbs is by no means a must sell, but I'm sure you could probably get a hefty sum for him for managers expecting him to seize a crazy workload at sub 200 pounds. Reynolds fits the bigger Montgomery size at 216 pounds better than Jameer Gibbs. I also just find it hard to believe with the narrative that the Lions want to load up Gibbs with in between the tackles touches when it's not what his body is meant for. Again, they want him to be their Alvin Kamara. Shoot for the moon with Gibbs, targeting guys like Jamar Chase, Brandon Ayuk, or this next running back that's going to win leagues in 2023. Running back Travis Etienne for the Jacksonville Jaguars. The ground game was poor as Travis Etienne went for just 40 yards on 12 carries. He was also dealing with cramps during the game against the Kansas City Chiefs. But Tank Bigsby had zero carries and played just 19% of the snaps. Etienne also had three targets with a 72% snap share. He was still a workhorse, outtouching all other Jacksonville running backs 14 to two. While the Jaguars' pass catchers remain tough to sort through, one thing is for certain. Travis Etienne is an RB1 on this team and faces a horrible Texans defense in week three. Three words, buy the dip. He's a top five fantasy running back for the rest of the season. Get him now with whatever pieces you can, like Derrick Henry, Christian Kirk, Mike Evans, or this next must sell running back. 
Running back DeAndre Swift, Philadelphia Eagles. So, Swift had a career game on Thursday Night Football. He rushed for 170 yards on 28 carries, while adding in three catches for six yards on three targets. 75% snap share tied for the third highest snap share of his career. The 28 carries were the second most he ever had in a game. Only twice has Swift carried the ball 17 plus times over 42 games played. The usage was insane and was fueled by Kenneth Gainwell's inactive status. Keep in mind, Swift barely played in week one, so he had fresh legs on a short week playing on Thursday. The Thursday night game was the perfect upside case for Swift in the Eagles offense. It's also the perfect sell high situation. As I slated at the top, this type of usage was unlike anything we've ever seen from Swift or an Eagles running back. I'm in the camp of believing this type of workload is not in the Eagles' long-term plan for Swift, and that when Gainwell returns, Swift's snaps will reduce dramatically. Recall that the Eagles head coach a day before the game that Swift's role would vary from game to game. This was the spot to unleash Swift and have him carry the load. Short week, Gainwell out, Swift was fresh, and the Vikings defense was just begging for the Eagles to run. So they did. But with a mini buy coming up, Gainwell should be back in the fold. And that puts Swift's weekly role in ambiguity. Keep in mind that what's coming up for the Eagles, Buccaneers, Commanders, Rams, Jets. Three of the four most extremely strong defensive line. Nothing like Minnesota. Sell high. Acquire 49ers wide receivers or running backs with more concrete roles like Ken Walker, Joe Mixon, or Ramondre Stevenson. Also look to trade for this next wide receiver. Wide receiver Christian Watson, Green Bay Packers, bye. Remember the biggest concern about Christian Watson entering the year was tied to Jordan Love being good. But I think through two weeks, where Love has tossed six touchdowns and zero interceptions, we should be confident he can support Watson for fantasy football, who is viewed as the clear front runner in the Packers wide receiver room. I know he's coming off an injury, but he's young and returned to success after injuries last year, especially given the Packers knack for dialing up some large passing plays that they have not been able to connect on. But that's Watson's bread and butter. So I'd expect him to step right into seeing those high value downfield looks. Sell Garrett Wilson or Najee Harris to grab Christian Watson or use this wide receiver to get him after a big game. Wide receiver, Sky Moore, Kansas City Chiefs, sell. With no Travis Kelsey and a limited Kelsey in week two, nobody on the Chiefs had more than a 13% target share. In week two, nobody else saw more than five targets. Sky Moore led the team with 70 receiving yards and scored, but the majority of his yards came on a 54 yard catch where he was wide open in the fourth quarter. Overall, Moore's lack of targets remains concerning. He has just an 11% target rate per route run through two games. Woof. Rookie Rasheed Rice has the same number of targets and target share, 9%, on just 18 routes run. That's a 39% target rate per route run this season. For me, the move is to sell Sky Moore. He's just not getting any reliable or consistent target share. He scored a big touchdown in Week 2. Use that as leverage to ship him off. Kansas City plays the Chicago Bears in Week 3. No doubt one of these wide receivers is going to have a big game, but good luck guessing which one. Happy to move more as part of a package to upgrade one of my starter positions, or look for guys like Nico Collins, Jerry Judy, or this next wide receiver. Wide receiver Michael Pittman Jr., Indianapolis Colts, bye. Gardner Minshew heavily targeted Michael Pittman Jr. in week two after he entered the game. Nine total targets from Minshew after seeing three from Anthony Richardson before the rookie quarterback left the game with the concussion. Pittman caught eight for 56 yards on a total of 12 targets. Even if Richardson misses time, I view Pittman as a buy low with the quarterbacks force feeding him targets. The first two plays were targets to Pittman after he saw one target in the first half of week one. The veteran quarterback is not bad for Pittman, as many automatically think for the wide receiver's fantasy value. Although he was listed as a sell last week, I am changing my tune after Pittman was slightly less productive in week two with new question marks about his quarterback's availability. The guy ranks fourth in target share at 33% over the first two games. Try to get Pittman with this must sell wide receiver. Wide receiver Garrett Wilson, New York Jets, sell. Not going to sugarcoat this, guys. The Jets' offense looked really bad from the start versus the Dallas Cowboys with Zach Wilson on our center. The offense did nothing until Wilson ripped off a great throw over the middle to Garrett Wilson, who took it the distance for a 68-yard touchdown. 68 of Wilson's total 94 yards in the first half came on that throw. This is just not going to work. Moving the ball is just a total and utter struggle with Zach Wilson at quarterback. He ranks dead last in passing EPA through two games. Garrett Wilson finished with just two grabs on eight targets. Many were off the mark or uncatchable, a lot of air yards of sadness. Best to get out of the Garrett Wilson business fresh off weeks where he has salvaged production with touchdowns. He won't do that every week as good as he is. For Wilson, I'd rather have DJ Moore, Jerry Judy, Christian Watson, or Alexander Madison if you were just hurting for running back production.
That concludes my list of 10 players that you should trade for or trade away before week three kicks off. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. And of course, check out fantasypros.com rest of season rankings to help with all your trades. But before you go, remember, if you want a chance to win a signed Debo Samuel San Francisco 49ers jersey, courtesy of bettingpros.com, your place to start betting smarter and not harder, all you have to do is subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now, come up below in this video, and that's it. I'll be announcing a winner right here on the channel. So make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and to claim your prize. Thanks for watching.